welcome you here today. Devonport is an exciting place, and today's announcement of a brand new football coach will generate a buzz in the Grand Rapids area and beyond. With our move into NCAA Division II and the GLIAC, our new leader of the football program is a perfect fit to usher us into a new era. At this time, I would like to welcome President Dr. Richard Pappas to offer his thoughts. Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for saying that. There's two people who said good afternoon. We're excited about this, and we're excited about uh, the addition. I want, I want to, uh, first of all, say that uh, Davenport University has been on a quality journey for the last, well, for many, many years, and uh, we're continuing our drive there in this hire. We've expanded our graduation rate by 116% over the last seven years, uh, and it's, that's more than doubling it. And all of our student outcomes are important to us. And our student athletes are important to us, too. I would be remiss if I uh, didn't thank Lou for his great foundational leadership as our head coach, and we wish him well at Western Michigan. Uh, today, uh, we're looking at our new head coach, and uh, our student athletes, by the way, are well over a 3.0 on GPA, and so academics is always our most important part. But we like to be competitive as well. And just a brief reflection, uh, when I had a chance to meet Sparky, uh, 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 he is intense, which is good. That's a good thing. Uh, but he cared more about the student and about their graduating. And to me, that was reflective of everything we believe in. And also, that will be competitive. And we're looking forward, since you came from Ferris, I think Ferris comes here for the game next year. And I won't say we guaranteed a victory. I won't do that to you. <laughs> but what we do guarantee is that we'll be in every game. And we'll fight as hard as we can. And, and uh, so I appreciate it. So congratulations, Sparky. Uh, let me bring up our AD, Paul Loudon. Thank you, Dr. Pappas. First of all, I'd like to thank the press, the, uh, the faculty, staff, all our student athletes, and the uh, family of, of Coach McEwen uh, for joining us here today. This wonderful, this wonderful event. Um, before we get to going to introducing Sparky, I want to talk a little about the uh, the process in which we did in to to select our new head coach. Uh, this started about three three and a half weeks ago. We uh, uh, when Coach Esposito um, went on to to Western Michigan. We uh, open the uh, uh, application pool we had over a hundred applications for this for this particular position and um, my uh, my leadership team we got down and went through every single one of those and narrowed it down to about 10 applicants we had our phone interviews uh, went through an extensive interview process there and then we brought five on campus and I can tell you this was a very tough decision all five of the candidates uh, could easily be sitting down here but we just had we had to find out who was going to be the right fit for Davenport and and coach McEwen he went came right to the top there and he is the right fit for Davenport and, and we're so excited to have him it's um, for, for, I want again thank coach Esposito with, uh, for his commitment to Davenport University what he's done built a foundation over two and a half three years ago when we first hired him uh, did a great job and where we are today and uh, the from the student athlete standpoint from an academic standpoint from our athletes it's been awesome I'd be remiss, remiss not to mention coach Kasuna uh, what he's done as an interim head coach up to this point, him and, and our coaching staff, to be able to, uh, you know, to get our recruiting class in here, all 32 signed, they, they did an absolutely awesome job. And, and I want to give them a round of applause for what they've done. <laughs> now on to Coach McEwen. Um, very unique skill set uh, that made him the right fit for Davenport. Um, First of all, academics and graduation. Number one priority was for Coach Barkey, and that was important for us in, in this hiring process. Uh, Coach McEwen, from a recruiting standpoint, he is arguably the number one recruiter in the GLIAC. He has had the number one class for the last few years. Obviously, we all know the success that Ferris State has had, um, so we're really excited about that. Not only the recruiting process, the knowledge he has of the GLIAC. He knows every single team inside and out. He knows the players, and I know he's going to prepare our team and be ready for us to be competing in the GLIAC this fall. 
So we are very excited to have uh, Coach McEwen lead our football program. I look forward to working very closely with Sparky, and, uh, and we're excited in the direction we're going. Before Sparky comes up, I'd like to bring back up our uh, Assistant Director for Athletics for Communication, Ryan Thompson, to give some credentials and accomplishments of our new coach. Thank you. Before I begin, I just wanted to let the media know that uh, Sparky and Paul will be available for comment afterwards as well. Sparky McEwen, a native of Grand Rapids, brings a wealth of experience to DU after spending the last five seasons at nearby Ferris State University. While an assistant coach with the Bulldogs, he helped guide the program to back-to-back -back undefeated regular seasons during the last two campaigns. In addition, Ferris State posted a 28-game regular season win streak from 2013 until 2016. The team finished 12-3 last season and advanced to the NCAA Division II semifinals after a 47-32 quarterfinal win at Grand Valley State. Sparky also has professional ties in the Arena Football League with the Grand Rapids Rampage and Oklahoma City Yard Dogs. He spent two different stints with the Rampage as the offensive coordinator from 2001 to 2003, during which time the team won the Arena Bowl in 2001. He was also head coach and director of football operations from 2005 to 2008 before leaving for Oklahoma City to also become head coach and president of football operations for the Yard Dogs until 2011. Sparky got his start at Grand Rapids Creston High School, served as the head coach from 1996 until 2003. During his final five years at the helm, the Polar Bears went 42 and 14 and made five straight MHSAA playoff appearances. In 1999, Creston went 12 and 2, and they were runner up in Division Three. It's my privilege to welcome Sparky McEwen to come up and offer some words for the first time as the head football coach here at Davenport. I think it's a little big, but <laughs> does that work? Yeah. All right. First of all, thank you. Uh, if you take a look around, what a turnout. If, if this is any indication of what we're going to do, that's big time. Give yourself a round of applause. Before we get started, uh, my two biggest fans, my sister, well, my sister and my mama, and, and mom, I'm not a washed up coach. I know about what you said, so I just want to throw it out there to you. That's an inside joke, y'all, between me and my sister, all right? Um, uh, those, those are my two biggest fans, okay? They're, they're, they're thick and thin, and both are very, very competitive. If I lose a game, that's where the washed up coach comes in, and my mom's very intense when it comes to that, so I think I got that intensity uh, from her. Um, my lady, uh, she's done a heck of a job. Uh, Christy, she's, she's, this morning my alarm clock said this, game day. I'm like, who is saying game day? She's over and she's saying game day. And so that should tell you, that gives you an indication of the type of person that she is. So thank you. Um, as we move forward, big time, big time man of faith, I believe. Okay? And in saying that, you got to have faith in order to get to where we need to go here. Uh, Crescent High School, we had faith. Okay? Rampage, we had faith. Oklahoma City, we had faith. Fair State, we had faith. These are things that our players, our student athletes, have to believe day in and day out that they have faith in the process. And the process is what's going to get us to where we need to go. So just know, every day, it's about faith with me and believe in the process. Uh, before we go any further, um, a little history. I grew up three blocks away from Davenport University. I had no idea this was going to happen. I worked 20, 50 yards away from Davenport at Central High School. So I'm taking everyone here back some history when I worked in GRPS. Um, at the age of 23, you know, I'm going back some time now, okay? For some reason, I decided to get a tattoo. 
I don't know why I got this tattoo. I have no idea, okay? Paul doesn't know about this. Dr. Pappas doesn't know about this. I decided to get a tattoo at the age of 23. It's the only one that I have. Unbelievable. It's a panther. It's a panther. So my players, the coaches at Ferris, Coach Anise didn't know it, and I showed it to him the other day. He goes, are you serious? So he goes, did you just get that? I said, no, I didn't get that. I said, I got that basically when I was 23 years old. So maybe that was destiny, okay? Maybe that was destiny. So there was a dream some time ago. There was a few young men that thought that bringing football to Davenport University was going to be important. Before you can achieve, it's got to be a vision. Dr. Pappas, Dr. O'Neill, Paul Loudon, Mr. Volk, and O'Neill. If I left out anyone, I'm disappointed. But that was pretty much the brain trust to the vision of bringing football, university football, to West Michigan. So for those guys, we need to give them a round of applause. Through the, through the process, what a thorough process. I've gone through a, a number of processes, and this athletic department, first class. Uh, Taronda, Mike, uh, Lauren, great job, awesome job. And I can tell you that because of experience. Experience in interviewing, experience in seeing administration work, it was amazing. The search committee, Josh, Karen, Chris, Lisa, Tom, and Ryan. Awesome. Questions were tough, but I was seasoned for it. I was ready for it. It was 25 years in the process. A little bit about the process. Very, very tough process. Uh, I'm a big boxing fan. Huge boxing fan. I like to research. I like to study. I like to go in and, and know my opponent. One of the greatest fights of all time, Sugar Ray Leonard, Marvelous Hagler. For the, for the boxing enthusiasts, you guys know what happened in that fight. I felt like going into this interview process, I may not be the smartest, I may not have the most uh, experience, there's some other things I can use to say. But I felt like if I got on that committee, four or half of that committee towards the later rounds to believe in me and say to themselves, wow, he's a perfect fit, he's a team player, it's about someone else. If I could do that, I felt like I could win this job. The other thing. I didn't care what coach came in here to interview for this job. He didn't grow up three, three blocks from Davenport. He didn't have a tattoo of a panther on his right arm, okay? He didn't live down the road. So I told myself, no one will out-effort me. Part of that process was giving great effort and passion. So to the committee, thank you. It was awesome. As we move on, today, it's, it's not about me, okay? I'm part of the team. There's a tremendous amount of work that has to be done. Dr. Paps and I, we met, we talked in privacy in regards to this upcoming challenge. And everyone here, it is a challenge. It is an unbelievable challenge. With all due respect to the, to the GLIAC, we're talking about, you know, in this part of the country, we will call it the Big Ten of Division II. Okay? Uh, we have a tall order before us. But our players may not know about the individuals that we're going to go against. I says, allow me to be your eyes. I know who these people are. I know who every team on this conference is. So, with that being said, the, the GLIAC, you know, it's a tough challenge, but um, they're going to have their hands full too, okay, because we're coming. 
Now, like I said, it's, it's, it's never been, and this is something that I value and I'll continue to, to preach to our players. It's, it can't be about you. It's got to be about others. It's better to give than to receive. For me, these are the people that have played a unbelievable, unbelievable role in the molding of what you see today. Sandlot football. You wouldn't think that something so precious, so delicate, could be an impact. There was this giant of a man. His name was Paul Martin. Okay? I was eight years old, and I don't know who decided to do this, but I was an eight-year-old playing on a ten-year-old team. And he looked at me and said, you are the quarterback. I said, no, I'm going to play receiver. He goes, no, you are the quarterback. I said, no, I want 88, Lynn Swan wore 88 from Pittsburgh, and I wanted to play receiver. He goes, no, you're a leader. You're my quarterback. Here I am, this little guy, eight years old, on a 10-year-old team playing quarterback. This giant of a man scared me to death, to death. And to this day, that giant of a man, all five feet, one inch of him, he's still a giant. My point, as youth, as we grow up, the impression, you're in a, a very impressionable state, that still weighs with me. I was his leader. So there's a few people like that, that obviously was important to me. I'll quickly go through some of them. Maurice Barnes, unbelievable. Police officer and GRPS in the city. Tough. The next individual, which to this day, I don't know what he saw in me, but obviously it was something and it worked. And he's and he's here today. Dr. Sebastian. Many of you know him as Doc. I know him as Doc. He was a principal at Crescent High School. He gave me a call and he said, you are the one. I said, no, I'm not. They had won a game. They were sorry. When I say sorry, y'all, they were sorry. He said, no, I have faith in you. I believe in you. So from there, as you know, at one point, we had a ranking in the USA Today as a recruiting pipeline for young men going to college. Dr. Newby, she was the superintendent of schools. I was in her office on several occasions, and, and I guarantee you, after she chastised me, and she said, good win. And she was a ball gal. She loved the polar bears. So to wherever she's at, thank you. There's a few coaches. One's here tonight, but this is high school. So for all the coaches out there that have the ability to, to mold individuals, we remember this. Jim Haskins. We all know who Jim Haskins is. Very recognizable Hall of Famer. The great, great Jamie Hosford. Grand Valley, great. Bill Henderson. Coach Popeil.
Main day pray. I get choked up about Mike. He benched me. He didn't care how good I was. I had a no-no. And he had a teachable moment. So, when he benched me, I never forgot that. And I learned. So, you didn't have to bench me, but it worked. So thank you. My college coach, Keith Otterbein, he's at Hillsdale. So we'll be across the way from each other. They're leaving the GLIAC. They're going into another conference. But I'm pretty sure down the road, we'll probably, we'll probably schedule them. Major impact. So those are the those are the individuals that begin to mold me. It wasn't about me. It's about them. The next step for me, because of what those individuals did, pro sports. Now you can get paid to play. Now you can make money to raise your family. Now you can do some special things and live out a dream. A coach that I learned from this group that in the pro level, it's not personal. It's business. It's not personal. It's business. So now I began to develop another layer of my life to develop me as a coach. And my coach when I was a player was Michael Trigg of the Rampage. Another individual that got my, my career started, Will McClay. Some of you don't know that name, but he's the right-hand man to Jerry Jones and the Cowboys. He's a mentor. Great guy. So now all of a sudden there's another layer and then there's another branch to the tree of people that you know that's going to obviously help us here at DU. Owners. I had the opportunity to be with some of the best people in the world. Dan DeVos, Scott Gorslein. Dan DeVos quick story for you. We would have executive meetings. And in those executive meetings, the air smelled a little different there. The room looked a little different there. To the point where my first executive meeting, I sat in the wrong chair. It was Dan DeVos's chair. And guys were looking around the room, and one of the guys said, Spark, that's Dan's chair. But the one next to Dan was open. So I wanted to be next to the man. I sat next to the man. To this day, I've learned so much. But the first thing I learned, Dan DeVos walks into the room and his pants on his suit, they moved a little differently than my pants. The pants to his suit moved a little different than everyone else's pants. These are things that I recognize. His shoes were a little different than my shoes. His shoes actually looked like they were alive. <laughs> so I would sit there and he would walk in and I would say, that's a really nice suit. And he would say in his joking voice, well, thank you, coach. Well, here's the deal. I figured that out quick, too. Those commas and his check, I don't even think he gets a check. I just think he just, he's made of money. Those commas are a lot more than the commas I was receiving. I, and I actually made a nice income from him. But I went home after that first meeting, that executive meeting, and I stepped out to the mirror, 
and I shook my leg. My pants did not move that way. My pants still don't move that way. This guy was a business mentor. It was about business. It was, it was bottom line. He did not deal in the gray. It was black or white. Scott Gorsline, my immediate boss. I learned to be a great employee and, and watch a guy manage us in a way where it was hands off, but the expectations were to do the right thing. So you respect that. Phil Miller. I like Dan DeVos. You learn compassion for athletes and doing things the right way and, and very giving to your communities. These are things that are important. So once again, I'm continuously being developed as what you see today. Ferris State University. I spent 11 years there, 10 years there, excuse me, as a player, as a coach, and we've done some unbelievable things. Unbelievable. And they have really good people. Dr. Eisler, Dr. Scobie, Kirk Weisenberger, Tony and Nice. The dream team is what I call them. It's a lot like the dream team we have here. They've got a vision. They've dreamt of certain things. And we've begun, we began to achieve those things. So thank you to them. Academic mentor, advisor, Dr. Cullen, she was absolutely amazing. To the athletic department at Ferris, what a beautiful culture. I, I walk in here at DU and it reminded me so much of home. Our department there at Ferris, unbelievable. The culture that has been created. I walk in here and I see a lot of similarities. A lot of family. I felt like I was at home here. Working with good people is important. So as I was interviewing for this job, I was also interviewing the people I was going to be working for. Loyalties. Very important to me. Very important. First football players. We got a few here tonight. Raise your hand. Love it. Those players, and that's what this is all about. It's, it's not about me. The players there, it's an unbelievable culture. The work ethic, they bought in. They have faith. They believe. It's the expectation. Nothing less, nothing less than great is accepted. We have to be great on the field, in the classroom, on campus, you have to be great. And that's the expectation, and those are the things, and the reason why Ferris State has catapulted itself into national prominence. So thank you to those players, because they are awesome. They sent me off well this morning. I was there with the team. And they sent me off this morning, and they said, Coach, it has to end. I said, no, it doesn't end. I said, because I'm alumni. I said, but I'll see you on the other side. And so we had some laughs, and they threw out a couple things, as you can expect. And they know that Coach is fired up down the road to play them. To my players, Crescent High School. I think we got a few here tonight, today, from Creston. There we go. Absolutely. What, what those impressionable guys achieve, they galvanize the city. Who does that at that age? They bought in, they had faith. All of a sudden you had a, a you know, you had a city that bought in. 
You had a city all about the players. It's not about me. It's the players. So thank you. OKC, the, the Yard Dogs, and the Rampage players. You know, I was talking to a friend. They said, how many NFL players did you coach? I said, over a 1,000. And no one ever realizes that. My entire roster were NFL players. I want only the best to recruit them to Grand Rapids. I had to fight markets like Dallas, LA, Chicago, Orlando, Philadelphia. The list go, goes on and on. And I had to sell GR. You think I can't sell Grand Rapids when you're going against these other small markets? Now we are the big fish in the pond. We're no longer the small fish on the pond. So we're going to get to the level where we need to be. And going in those living rooms, selling DU's outstanding academics, that dream, that vision you have from going from Fulton, Fountain area, out here with the, the buildings that are going up, it's easy for me to sell bling. I, that's what I do. I love it to go and sit with parents and say, look what we have. We want you to be a part of this. It's new. This is what we want. A few special thanks. Uh, a, couple, a couple friends. Jeff Carmody, long time buddy. Augustino Vitale, Jerome Prescott, Bobby Taylor, great people, great people, Davenport football family, current players, coaches, we have work to do. And the work we you know the work that we will do here, we will truly achieve as a team. That that includes your wives, girlfriends, moms, dad. Because it's a team effort. You don't win championships with one person. It's got to be everyone in this room, all hands on deck. No man left behind. So we have work to do. And we will have fun. We will enjoy the process. Because as we know, it is a process. We won't cut corners. We'll do it the right way. Because that's the most important thing. Do it the right way. A few more special thanks. That's been very, very instrumental in who I am. I told you the theme here. It's not about me. It's about the support system. Having good people around you. Having faith hard work. And these individuals have been a part of that because when you grind, as these coaches know, when you grind, there's got to be the wife, the girlfriend, the mom that misses out. They, they miss out. The hours upon hours that are spent with that person away is tough. So you've got to have a support system. So these few people, I'll just name a few people. Um, Jim and Judy, in-laws, great. Um, I, got a, I got a buddy here. He's a brother. Uh, Thomas Gordon. Um, my grandparents. My dad that's no longer here. Um, and last, and 
not least. One son, he's a graduate. He's in Texas. Another son. He's a graduate. In his final semester of his master's. My daughter, she's a senior. She's a road boat. She's a Western Michigan Bronco. And today, actually, I, I met her boyfriend for the first time at her dad's press conference. <laughs> so she's been holding on to that one for a while, but she thought this was a good day, so this is a good day to bring him out. <laughs> I've been told she was a lot like her dad. She researches and she knows when to get it done. <laughs> but... What more to ask for? So, hopefully I didn't miss anybody. And I'm excited to have an opportunity to work with young people. Someone said, do you miss being a head coach? I said, well, I haven't been a head coach for five years, but I've always felt like when you're a head coach, won the Coach of the Year Award, and I was the happiest guy. And I was the offense coordinator. And someone said, why are you so happy? I said, because we won Coach of the Year. He goes, no, your head coach won Coach of the Year. I said, no, that's all of us. And that's, that's just who I am. So it's, it's, it's all hands on. And, and we go to work. Um, I talked to the football team before I got here. And I'll tell you exactly what I said. Academics. Football, football, academics. If it's anything else, I'm pretty much blind to it. I'm into developing men, and I understand no one's perfect, but I need you to work on being perfect. And if I ask you to do something, the expectation is that you will do it, because it's not personal, it's business. And this is a business university, and we will act like that. We will walk around this campus like a teammate. We've got a tall order ahead of us. The winning tradition is here. The winning tradition is here. If you walk out this gym here and you see those banners, no one's been sleeping here. People have been extremely busy. So for me, we got a late start. So my guys got to catch up. And that's going to be understood. I've already met with um, university decision makers. And we have the resources here to be really, really good. Really good and fast. So that's the expectation. I'm excited. I'm at, I'm at home. I just want to end with this. When I left that interview, I slept hard. I was like, I told you I like boxing. I approached it like it was the fight of my life. That's how important it was. Thank you.
Uh, we'll open it up to any questions, uh, to the media or anybody that, that may have. I know we have a microphone here, so if anybody would like to ask a question, we'll do that for a couple of minutes. The gentleman here. Welcome, back. Charles. <laughs> Welcome, Coach. Uh, in addition to being a head coach, Coach Esposito was also a defensive coordinator. What are your plans for the defensive side going in? Well, you know, we just finished this process, and I just accepted the job. Um, I know we have a lot of great people here already. Uh, my plans is to sit down with them, and um, we're going to talk. And I've watched two ball games, and I've watched. Uh, these guys perform at a high level. Uh, so there's a lot of things in place that I love about what's going on. Um, I don't, you know, right now, the elderly and the young don't like change. I understand that. I've been in a position to walk in on several situations where I had to take over jobs and making change is tough. You take a couple steps backwards when you make change. Um, I'm pretty comfortable in my skin with you know getting everybody caught up on things. I spent enough time in the profession to uh, learn a different language, per se. So uh, my hopes is that I can you know retain as many of my guys here because they've done one heck of a job, you know, with these young men. Uh, we got some big ball games coming up, and 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 change right now could could be tough in my book. I remember you interviewing me in in uh, 1987. By the way, you were a lot younger then. <laughs> How you doing, Coach? Good to see you again. Good to see you. How about? I know it's all been fast. How about staff in place when you want to do that? If you've already done some of that, and, and where you are as far as your your boundaries and people that you've been associated with yeah. at the AFL level as well as college. And NFL level, uh, you know, obviously, uh, this administration has, you know, they've given me the tools, they've given me the resources to be successful, and and you know, they're they're familiar with where we are, they know what we want to do here. Uh, so, uh, with that being said, I get to sit down with the current staff once again. Um, these guys here are good. Lou, Lou did a great job. Lou did a great job, and. Um, I just want to kind of take the baton and, and you know, I'm the second leg right now. And typically your second leg is, from what I understand, it's one of your fastest legs. And I'll, I'll take it from here. I'll, I'll take us to another level. Uh, but I'm going to be careful, you know, um, in what I do. I'll consult with Mr. Loud and, and I'll talk to our people here. Um, you know, it's, it's not my first rodeo, okay? I, I can't do this by myself. That's who I am as a coach. So I'll consult with people and, and we'll make the right decisions. so much for being here today. That just concludes today's press conference. Any media that would like to call us?